it's uh, raining out again, uh, so I'm going to talk a little loud. Hope you can hear me. First thing I'm going to do is uh, grind the top edge and the bottom edge off. Make it off. Make make sure it's all flat. So I just got a couple of gouges in there. I want to grind them out. And then this coating on the side is a plastic coating. I've got to I got to grind that off uh, so it doesn't melt off. Plus, I'm going to be painting this, so I want that off there. So that's what I'm doing next. This has got some slag in here that I'm going to get a hammer and knock that slag off so it'll be easier to weld. Done. Okay, what I got to do now is trace around uh, the base of it and uh, cut me two plates out with my plasma cutter. It took me about an hour to get all that plastic off there. Boy, that was a chore. Alright, I'm fixing to uh, get to cutting here in a minute. Well, guess what? Can't see anything, can you? Well, me neither. My plasma torch kicked off my breakers. I guess I got to shut a few things off in here. Be right back. Well, it was my uh, heater in my hen house. Runs off. I got it plugged in in here and it, you know, pulls a lot of juice. So, uh, they're going to be cold for a little while until I get these cut.
There's two of them. I'm going to take this into my other shop, put them on the grinder, smooth these edges out. We'll be right back. Okay, what I'm doing now is cutting a notch out here for the chimney. This is where you're going to load the wood at, and then inside the chimney goes up this way. Uh, I got to cut the notch out. Out of battery, gotta get another battery. Okay, that fits, and that's about how far it's gonna stick out right there. All right, now I gotta weld my chimney together. I don't quite have it cut out, I'll cut it out, weld it together, show you what that looks like before I put it in here. smoky in here. I don't know how well you can see, but uh, I got my top cut for the chimney. I got my chimney all welded. So now I got to do some dry fitting, make sure everything's going everything's gonna to work here. good so far. Just a second. Close, I got you looking at it here. All right, that's looking good. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to weld the top on, and then I'm going to weld around around the uh, chimney there. And then I'm going to cut some legs, weld some legs, and this is the bottom here that's facing up. So, uh, but you know what? I could have a cup of coffee. Good Lord, it's just a little past noon. I'm going to pass out from, from uh, lack of sleep here if I don't get coffee. I got up at 3 o'clock this morning. See ya. Well, my welder uh, quit feeding wire, so uh, I may have overheated it. I gotta let this thing cool. It's you're supposed to weld for like two or three minutes and then let it cool for eight. And I haven't done that. So it, it might have kicked a reset button off in there. I'm just gonna let it cool down. But well, here is what I got. This of course will, will get cut off. And uh I think I'm gonna weld some some uh uh flat stock across the top to give it like a, a pot standoff. This is a little too long. I'm probably going to cut about an inch and a half off of that. And uh, I got the one inch tubing in the vise. What I'm going to do is, uh, I have another welder. I'm not going to get it out though. 
I'm gonna probably uh, stop. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. It's in the afternoon, and uh, I've been messing with this. You know, most of the day, in and out of the house, doing other things. Uh, I gotta cook supper. So uh, I'm gonna let this cool off, and I'm gonna come back out tomorrow and uh, finish this. And if I can't get this welder to work, I have another welder that I can use. It's not as easy to use as that. Oh, my plaza cutter, what a dream. What a beautiful cut. I had to do very, very little grinding to clean it up. I'm glad I got it. And here's the legs. I'm fixing to make the legs 10 inch and a 70 degree angle. All right, I'm gonna put this video up. And uh, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get back out here and finish up. I'm even gonna turn a handle on my lathe. The handle is gonna be right above the, uh, the feed tube. It's gonna be uh, right in here. And uh, I'll turn it on my lathe and stain it. Okay, see you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in to BZ Trucks Weather Report. This morning, it'll be I can't believe it's this cold, followed by a wintry mix of I can't believe it's this cold and why is it this cold? For your afternoon drive home, you can expect I can't believe it's this cold. Oh yeah, that's the chickens finishing off my Monsanto stew. This is its third day and I kind of hate eating stuff on the third day. There's just a little bit left. They seem to be liking it. So far, no extra thumbs or third eyes. Okay, I've got them all for my legs cut. And that is a 25 degree angle. And I know that because I now have an angle gauge. So uh, my next step with this stove is to weld the legs on. And, uh, oh, my water's boiling. Sorry, chickens, it's gonna be a little while now. Gotta let that cool down. Ah. Don't you, no, 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 that's hot. Don't drink, no. Sorry about the interruption. I had to shut it down and get my dogs out of here. They're fixing to drink that boiling hot water. I don't care if they drink the chicken's water, but uh, but it was boiling. Okay, what I need to do, this is how the legs are gonna go, by the way. Just like that. And uh, what I need to do now is measure four equal distances around here. Uh, Starting from the chimney, I'm going to measure out, and I'm probably going to want legs like uh, right about here and here, and uh, two on the back side, just the same distance apart. But let's see where the measurement takes me. In the meantime, I've got to drink my oh crap, that's good coffee. This is not frog toad coffee, though. However, Christmas is just around the corner. All right, let me get this measured and uh, I'll start tacking these on. Okay, what I've got is 34 inches around here, divided by four leaves eight and a half inches between each leg. So I'm going to start at the center of this feed chute and I'm going to measure four and a quarter out in each direction. And that should put me uh, eight and a half inches apart. Uh, and then I'll just measure eight and a half inches from the other two, from these two legs to the back legs. And uh, that should space them equally apart. We'll see. Well, I don't know how this happened, but the legs are exactly the right distance apart. We'll have to look into this, see what went wrong with my math. Looking good. Now what I'm gonna do is turn it over Fill it up with vermiculite and uh, weld the bottom on. Let's see. And then I'm going to weld the handle on and then on the top, on the top, I'm going to weld some uh, cross pieces as a pot standoff. And then it's off to the paint and body.
The insulation is what makes it a rocket stove. Uh, Kevin Bacon has shown that you can use it like a rocket stove without the insulation, but the insulation definitely gets the fire up hot enough where it creates the gases that rocket stoves, well the whole premise of a rocket stove is once it reaches temperature it uses the gas to cook and not the wood. The wood creates a gas. Which is why the height is so critical, the height of the uh, chimney. Too low and you're not burning all the gas. Too high and the gas is burning up before it reaches what you're cooking. I spent probably two years researching, experimenting, I won't say perfecting, but uh, I've worked with these rocket stoves for quite a while now and I'm, I think I understand the science behind it. We'll put just a little more on that. Smooth that out, weld the bottom onto this, a handle, the pot standoffs, I'm going to clean it all up, and then it's, uh, like I said, off to the painting body. Going to be as interesting as watching grass grow. <coughs> well, I made the uh, the tabs that are going to go on the top of the stove for the the pot standoffs, and uh, I'm going to grind some corners on them, take the sharp edges off. Okay, these are the tabs that are going to hold the handle that I'm going to turn on my lathe here in a second. I'm going to use a quarter inch bolt to hold the handle on, so I'm using a 9 30 seconds drill bit. Alright, we're getting there. Now, I'm going to uh, get a piece of wood and we're going to turn that handle on the lathe. Alright, I'm no master turner, so uh, I'm 
going to knock the edges off of this. I've drew, drawn a line here, the width of my hand, uh, so that's how wide it's going to be. Let's just see what we come up with here. In. Now that I've got the, this is round, uh, I'm going to move my rest in a little bit. Alright, I'm going to mark the ends of this right now. something here.
I'm going to stop this, have a look at it. All right, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to stain it, I'm going to put a couple coats of clear on it, and then we'll go back to the shop with the heat and uh, finish welding everything up. Weld the tabs on for the handle, weld the pot standoffs on, and then we'll uh, take it to the uh, paint and body guy. I hate dealing with him, he's such a jerk. I think it's a paint fumes. All right, I got two things left to do to this. I'm uh, gonna cut these legs off flat where when it's upside down, uh, it'll be square with the, with the floor or whatever it's sitting on. And then I gotta make a draft plate, a floor plate for the uh, feed tube here. No big deal. I'm not gonna, uh, it's just, I just gotta cut a piece of metal. But right now I'm gonna cut these off. Cut them off square. Do the rest of them like that and turn it back over. There we go. The next time you see this, it's going to be yellow and black. Oh, let me show you the handle. There's the handle. I haven't put any clear coat on it yet because uh, I've got my clear over there near the stove warming up. It was in my other shop. Alrighty, I'm going to put some tools away in here, clean up a little bit, drink a cup of coffee, and uh, come back and paint. Let's give you a profile. <laughs> Alrighty. I got uh, two more coats of yellow, two more coats of black to put on. I've got the handle here. But uh, it's going to take me too late. I'm going to be working on this till uh, late tonight. And I want to go ahead and get this video up so people can see it before they, you know, settle down to supper and watch little TV. Uh, I, got my, I got my wood stove cranked up. I got my fan blowing air around here. It's taking about two hours in between each coat to dry. And... Uh, I will finish this tonight, all except for the floor plate, but that'll just take me a few minutes to make. But this is what it's looking like. Bump, chicka, wah, wah. All right. I will show you a quick clip when this is 100% done. I sure would like to paint uh, or put a prepper stock 2014 or prep, you know, in a curve and 2014 uh, Shane with Sulphur City Design. If you got any ideas, that would be pretty, pretty cool. Uh, between here and here is about right at 11 and a half, 12 inches. And this pipe itself is. Uh, on the outside is about 11 inches wide. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put this video up. But just picture it with that nice stained homemade handle there and, uh, and a floor plate in the, in the bottom of the feed tube there. Okay. Thank you for watching. It's been a fun project. A lot of work. This is, uh, I'm calling it Moores. M-O-A-R-S. Mother of all rocket stoves. This thing will last several lifetimes. And I hope whoever gets it really uses it. Because that's what it's meant for. Thanks for watching. Okay. It's completely done. That's about two and a half days of work right there. 
like the painting, I got five coats of yellow on there. For some reason, yellow just does not cover up very well. I only got two coats of black on there and almost didn't need the second coat. But uh, that's what it looks like. All right, I am ready for prepper stock. I think I want to get one of my stickers, my BC truck stickers from uh, Sulphur City Design and put that on the front and on the back. Prepper stock 2014. Because uh, I'm kind of proud of this. Why not put my name on it? Okay, today's project. probably doesn't look like it uh, on my camera here but it's kind of dark in here and I find that the older I get the more light I need to work on things and I got a whole bunch of scrap leftover whitish paint you know some of its ivory some of its cream some of its kills I'm gonna mix it all together in that five gallon bucket and I'll put a second coat on that two coats on this bare wall here and maybe it'll brighten it up here some. I wish I could get some up here, but that's a metal roof and it won't stick. That's really where you need the, the white is above your head where it bounces the light back down to you. Okay. I got my wood stove cooking back there. Let me aim this fan down at, the, at this here just to completely dry it before I go to moving it. That ought to do it. All right, I'm going to have a cup of coffee, and by that time, it ought to be warmed up in here. See ya. Don't touch it. It's still wet. <laughs> 